Welcome to our next session of ClearCalc teams up with Engineer to the Rescue to show you exactly how to determine the input data for ridge beam design. I am David Ortican, a structural engineer in the US and your host for this video. In the next few minutes you will learn the steps required to create the input data to run this module. If after seeing the video you have any questions, please let us know. We will do our very best to help you become proficient in solving structural design problems with ClearCalc. And now, here is our friendly, intrepid engineer to the rescue, contemplating this problem and trying to decide just exactly how to determine the input data for ridge beam design on our little mountain cottage. You will remember from the last time we had a cottage 48 feet deep, 30 feet wide. <clears throat> we planned to frame the back half with common rafters and an LVL ridge, and we were engaged in the design of these heavy timber rafters here, five sets of them, spaced at six feet on center, framing into a ridge beam that's 24 feet long overall, supported at six feet and 24 feet with a six foot overhang. We plan to use a tributary width of a horizontal projected loading system of 15 feet, half of the total span. We have two fans on each side. They each contribute 50 pounds to the ridge, so we'll have a point load here and a point load there due to the fans. Roof pitch 10 and 12, ground snow load 25, ultimate wind 115, exposure B, mean roof height at 30 feet, importance factor of one. The walls still two by sixes, that won't influence us too much except right here where we plan to have a post here and a post there. These could turn out to be fairly uh, strong PSL posts, perhaps, probably not pipe columns. I'd rather not do that. I doubt tall six by sixes will work here with the gravity loads that we're going to have uh, on that ridge beam. So the rafter loading and the ridge loading is a little bit different. In the rafter loading, we did a fairly exact analysis where we put the rafter loading in on this 10 and 12 slope and we got the reactions here. We got our wind uplifts for the design of the connections. Here, I'm thinking that I want to use a Doug fir ridge beam because I found that these rafters could be number one, six by 10 Doug firs. So I'm thinking a, a, a Doug fir ridge beam here. I'd like to house the rafters into the side of the ridge beam and connect them to the housing with a screw. This will give me concealed connections. I could use Simpson connectors. I don't want them exposed. The thing that I need to remember is whatever size ridge beam I come up with, I've got to add two inches to the thickness to compensate for the one inch housings on each side. Also, you will see that even though we could have five point loads here, it turns out that a uniformly distributed load along the length of the ridge beam with unit loads over a tributary width of 15 feet is a lot easier to enter than, than five sets of point loads, and the results are nearly identical with this many point loads. You might get a little bit greater bending stress out here due to a point load on the ridge rather than a uniform load in here, but overall that it's inconsequential in this particular design. If you're in doubt, you should experiment with both to determine it, particularly if it's a very long beam or the loads you have just a few point loads or something like that. But generally speaking, uniform loading will work just fine. So, let's look at our ClearCalc's input data sheet. You remember from the last time we had one very similar to this for the rafters. This one's going to be a little bit different because we're going to use slope and tributary area reductions for the live load. We're going to use main wind force resisting systems for the wind load. And for the snow, snow load, we're going to use a flat roof snow load. So things are just a little bit different. We've set it up to accommodate those differences. So now let's take a look at the input data. We have an actual length of beam of 24 feet, horizontal span of 24 feet or distance, pitch of slope 10 and 12, slope factor is 1.3 from our rafter design, the ratio of the run to the horizontal distance uh, on our 10 and 12 pitch, which we're going to need to correct the dead load and the snow load. The bracing will be continuous on the top and bottom edges because we're gonna frame into the sides of the ridge beam and fully stabilize it and prevent it from buckling. The support locations will be at six and 24. It'll be a simple horizontal beam. It will of course be non-repeating, never repeating for a ridge beam. 
Service conditions will be dry, temperature range zero to 100, not incised. We're not doing pressure treated dug fur. Deflection limits, we're gonna make them a little bit more stringent with L over 240 live load deflection, L over 180 total load deflection. You could relax them a little bit if you like. I don't like to see any sag in the ridge beams that I could detect off at a distance uh, when I'm looking up at the ridge. The design loads are gonna be unit loads based on a tributary width of a horizontal projected load at 15 feet wide. As I mentioned, the live load is gonna be reduced for both slope and tributary area. The tributary area of the ridge beam is 24 feet of length times 15 feet of width, or 360 square feet. This would be a very large component in cladding area if it was such. However, it's clearly a main wind force resisting system in, in that uh, it, it uh, gets loads from, uh, from two different planes. But in this area, we're just concerned with live load. The adjustments, when we multiply them out, are come out to a little bit less than 12 pounds a square feet. Uh, we, can, we can't use less than 12 pounds, so we set that as the live load uh, loading. The dead load is gonna be 15 pounds a square foot along the slope times 1.3, which is our slope adjustment factor. That gives us an equivalent horizontally projected dead load of 20 pounds a square foot. We're gonna have the two point loads from the fans, one at 12 feet, one at 18 feet, and they're both gonna be 100 pounds. We're gonna have two fans at 100 pounds. Half of the loading is gonna go into each, each side of the ridge, and so we get a total of 100 pounds at 12, and another 100 pounds at 18. The snow load is gonna be the flat roof snow load, and we find that there's a, a exposure factor for a, a wooded area of 1.2 versus an open area of one. We're gonna take the, the conservative factor of 1.2 and multiply it times 0.7 times the ground snow load of 25. You'll see this equation in chapter seven for uh, uh, the uh, flat roof snow load, and in this case, it turns out to be 21 pounds a square foot. A square foot. Now, back to the wind load. Because it's a main wind force resisting system, as we explained previously, because of the slope and the tributary area, the two planes, the tributary area, we're gonna go to figure 28.5-1 on page 318 of ASCE 716, which we showed you previously. And we look at the values there for the worst loading conditions, which I always like to take for wind load. I don't, I don't break that up into each little isolated load for just a few feet. I figure the best thing to do is just take the worst load case, the highest magnitude loading over the whole length. Let's be nice and conservative here. It doesn't cost us much in terms of connections, and it won't cost us anything in terms of the design because all wind loads can be divided by 1.6, which is the duration of load factor for wood. In addition to that, we multiply the ultimate wind values that we find in the code by 0.6 to get the ASD load, and we're gonna use allowable stress design for this particular beam. So all that being said, if I look at those values in the table for our condition, and I multiply them by 0.6, I find that they're less than 0.6D, which is a factor in the controlling load case of 0.6D plus 0.6W, which controls uplift. This gives us the minimum dead load resistance, maximum wind uplift. In the formula, the 0.6 is the ASD multiplication factor for taking the load from ultimate to ASD load. And so when I look at all of this, I realize that once I apply the factor to the load, the dead loads more than offset that, there is no net uplift. So all of those values are zero. We don't even have to enter them into the calculations and clear calcs. So this is the input data for the ridge beam. Good luck with your calculations. Please call us if you have any questions. Thanks for listening.